There are countless astonishing ruins upon the islands of Malta, many of which we have covered in the past, some in particular being of such an advanced nature that many a dedicated researcher has come away from said sites with a strong suspicion and awareness of stolen evidence, suggesting to them that whoever built these buildings must have had some form of assistance from someone or something with a far greater intellect than that of ancient or even modern man. One in particular, a structure with such mystifying properties, we have now covered it on two occasions here on our channel. However, upon the lesser-known Maltese island of Gozo stands the oldest yet no less astounding ruin of Malta, known as Gigantia. Thought to mean giant's tower, it is a megalithic temple complex of tremendous antiquity, with many concluding that it far predates even that of the Great Pyramid complex of Giza. A group of Neolithic stones still left in formation, which continue to give modern man a small glimpse into the astonishing past abilities of its builders. Thanks to the moderate, long-lasting temperate climes of the Mediterranean, Gigantia's megaliths still stand, giving us a chance to explore this remarkable site. And what must be considered the most intriguing factor surrounding its construction is the ancient folklore that can still be found swirling within the minds of the local Goatsians. This legend tells of an ancient giant, a female, who long after her supposed demise continued to be worshipped here, with many of the temple's elements now recognized as ceremonial sites, specifically oriented around the rites of female fertility. This folklore has also been intriguingly corroborated by a number of astute, honest researchers who have, over the years, successfully unearthed numerous figurines and statues at sight, specifically associated with this ancient cult. According to local Gozitan folklore, a giantess who ate nothing but bread, beans, and honey once bore a child here, from a man selected from the common people. And with the child hanging from her shoulder, she built these temples to not only use as her abode, but to later be used as her burial location, and thus a place of worship. Yet according to academia, who disregard such legends as having any historical accuracy, still concede that the effort to create such a site was undeniably a remarkable feat, especially when one considers that these monuments were constructed at a time even before the wheel had been introduced and indeed predates the invention of metal tools. However, as they so fervently deny the possibility of past ancient giants, we feel they should consider the most remarkable characteristics of Gigantia being the scale of its still existing yet highly eroded megalithic blocks, with some still in situ, weighing far in excess of 10 tons, somehow transported from a faraway location and placed within the temple walls with such ease and skill that to deny the fact that even if not the work of an ancient giant, but the accomplishments of a past civilization, that they were clearly far greater than those currently claimed within the history books, and to deny such reality to us is a sign of negligence in their responsibility to convey to a learning population the truth of world history. Who built Gigantia? How did they build it with such enormous stones and with such an awareness of cardinal orientations? Was it, as the legend states, once built single-handedly by an ancient female giant? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. There are many sites in the modern world which are overlooked by mainstream academia, some due to their inexplicable nature and others due to the controversial nature of the discoveries made during initial investigations. One such site is known as the Dover Mound a large earthwork located in the state of Kentucky, a site which researchers have attributed to Native Americans. Now largely believed to have been a burial ground, this due to the 50 or so cremations which have been identified within the mound. Specifically attributed to a group known as the Adena people, 
However, one skeleton in particular, located at the site, escapes modern understanding. A seven-foot-tall giant skeleton of what is claimed as an Adena man was discovered. What was more interesting than his height, however, was his abnormally elongated head and disproportionately large torso in relation to his legs. This is not a unique find, however. Native American burial sites all over America have produced similar remains, yet their origins lack any logical explanation. In Ohio, for example, similar remains were found of incredibly tall men with elongated heads and disproportionately large torsos. The remains were thought to have been of extraterrestrial, but scientific investigation claims to have confirmed these are definitely human remains. Archaeologists are still continuing to find similar remains at Native American burial mounds all over the country, and indeed globally, so the possibility that these remains are instead the remnants of a once global, now lost civilization is still a topic of debate, one which has compelling supporting arguments. One additional site in particular was found in New York. An archaeological dig made in 1971 at a Native American burial ground unearthed more than 200 giant skeletons, some of which measured 9 feet in height. It was estimated at the time that the remains could have been up to 9,000 years old. Yet, predictably, the remains, although widely reported in the media, have subsequently vanished. Were these remains left by a now lost, yet once global civilization? We find their discovery all over the states, and indeed worldwide, highly compelling.
Ohio, the United States of America, nearly 12,000 years ago. The Cherokee would descend from Northeast Asia to inhabit the Americas, upon arrival they were welcomed by a race of giant beings. They would become known as the Moon-Eyed People, a race of people, far older than humans. It is said that they were responsible for the ancient ruins that now dot the landscape. The Cherokee called them the Moon-Eyed, due to them only being able to see in the dark, during the day they had very poor eyesight. From the book, Old World Roots of the Cherokee, Chapter 5, What Kind of Indians Lived in the Territory of the Choctaw and Chickasaw. According to local traditions, and confirmed by excavations of bones in Tennessee, a race of white giants. The Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the area, and with whom their ancestors fought when they first arrived in Mississippi. It was always believed that these were just stories passed down from generation to generation, the tribe for example had a legend of the Mastodon roaming the Great Plains of America. However, over the past few years the remains of this mythical race have began to surface, confirming the Cherokee's accounts. This story was told by Comanches in 1857, many moons ago, a race of white men, 10 feet high, and far more rich and powerful than any white people now living, inhabited a large range of country, extending from the rising to the setting sun. Their fortifications crowned the summits of the mountains, protecting their cities in the valleys. They excelled every other nation on earth, either before or since, in all manner of cunning handicraft, they were brave and warlike, ruling over the land they had wrested from its ancient possessors with a high and haughty hand. They drove the Indians from their homes by the sword, and occupied the valleys in which their fathers had dwelt before them. The remnants of their fortresses, and the crumbling ruins that surrounded us all, is what remained of their mighty cities. In agreement, the Indian trader Adair often referred to the Nanish Tahuolo as departed white ghosts, vested with spiritual powers whose descendants were priests and magicians. Navajo legends speak of the Starnake people, a regal race of white giants endowed with mining technology who dominated the West, enslaved lesser tribes and had strongholds all through the Americas. The remains support legends of this race of giants having multiple sets of teeth, and having been over 10 feet in height. The remains have been officially exhumed, but alas not officially covered in the press, it is as if we are now at a point of paradigm destruction. Artifacts that tell of such beings are no longer successfully hidden, they are now just ignored. Following, some archaeological evidence found regarding this giant race, they practiced a mother goddess religion, they possessed copper, not bronze, axes, polished slate tools have been found, including fishing plummets, which were apparently regarded as sacred, belief that the grandmother moon was the repository of souls, a diet of mainly shellfish and seafood. The building of fish weirs on North American rivers to trap migrating eels, this is a form of fishing known as elvering, but due to plummeting stocks it is now widely regarded as detrimental to the ecosystem. Certain vegetarian habits, wild rice, for instance, inscriptions on artifacts, especially pipes, often buried with the dead, use of coal and petroleum, weaving and looms, knowledge of seafaring, mathematics and engineering, including canals and irrigation, burying of a dog with a child to guard the latter in the afterlife, a language apparently Afro-Asiatic and close to Semitic tongues, and kingcraft, nobles were buried in seated positions on thrones surrounded by a coterie of their retainers. They also had flatter heads and six fingers and toes. Were these giants highly advanced? Did they build the pyramids? There is also many contradictory tales across the earth, which speak of primitive, cannibalistic beasts, enslaved and used for their strength, yet no legend has ever been corroborated with such compelling archaeology as the moon-eyed people of Ohio. Where these races of giants came from, or indeed where they went, is a question which needs to be answered. Giorgio Tsoukalos goes deep. The only way the ancient astronaut theory can be disproven is when the extraterrestrials show up and say we were never here in the past. <laughs>